Well, hi, and welcome or welcome back to Evan's Homeschool Adventure. I'm Sarah, and on this channel, I provide resources and tips gleaned from my ongoing homeschool experience, along with my 20-year career in education, leadership, and assessment. In this video, I'm going to share with you the resources I use to teach my kids how to read and what I'm doing for the one who's still struggling. So let's go ahead and get started. When I started structured reading lessons with my kids, my twins were four and my son was five years old. This is our very first year of officially homeschooling, and while I did have some previous experience teaching ELA or English language arts to grades K through three, I had never taught anyone how to read from scratch. Before we started the structured reading lessons, I incorporated these five reading readiness skills into our daily routine. I wanted to share this slide with you in case you've got kids who are at this pre-reading level and need to really incorporate these skills before you go on to a structured reading program. And if there's interest, I'm happy to do a video that's just focused on pre-reading skills. But for now, I just wanted to highlight that for teaching letters and the sounds that they make, the Leapfrog Learning's The Letter Factory DVD was incredible. My kids watched that maybe twice a week for two weeks and had it down. The other thing I wanted to highlight is the importance of reading aloud, how critical that is in order to prepare kids for formal reading instruction. So like I mentioned, I had never taught reading from scratch before, and I knew I didn't want to mess it up. So when I looked for a curriculum, I had very specific criteria. Number one, it had to be foolproof. I was looking for as close to a scripted curriculum as I could find. Number two, it had to be a phonics-based program. And third, it had to be proven to be effective. So after a lot of research, this is what I found and decided to use. This is Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. This was written by Sigrid Engelman, Phyllis Haddix, and Elaine Brunner. And the promise of this program is with daily lessons of about 20 minutes each, after your kid completes the 100th lesson, he or she should be reading on a solid second grade level. This curriculum uses the DISTAR method of instruction. DISTAR stands for Direct Instructional System for Teaching and Remediation. This is a scripted, phonics-based reading program, and it was created in the 1960s to help kids from low-income families improve their language skills and their reading comprehension. I had also read that there have been numerous studies demonstrating that this DISTAR method has been shown to be more effective than many other of the popular reading instructional programs, even if the child has a diagnosed learning disability. Now, like I mentioned, I used this program when my kids were four and five. During the program, they turned five and six, um, but the book says that this program is appropriate for, I'm gonna quote this direct from, directly from the book, for bright three and a half year olds, average four and five year olds, or for kids who have been in school but haven't learned how to read yet. They go on to say that the curriculum is not recommended for poor readers who have been taught how to read but who make frequent mistakes. Now, I don't know why you couldn't use this curriculum for that group of kids, but that's what the book says. I was able to find and check out this book from my local library, but when it became apparent that we were gonna really use this full time that it was working well for us, I went ahead and bought a copy for myself off of Amazon for something like $12, maybe even like $11.55. It was very inexpensive. So I wanna pause right here and share with you one of my pro tips. As a homeschooling parent, you may be eligible for an educator library card. Not all places offer this, but where they do, some of the main benefits can include checking out books and other resources for a longer period of time, and sometimes you can put more books on hold at any given time. One thing to note is that this curriculum makes use of an altered orthography in order to resolve some of the typical early stumbling blocks that early readers get hung up on. Orthography is a fancy word that just refers to the letters that make up words or how the words are spelled. When I was researching this curriculum, it seemed like there are some parents who didn't really appreciate this altered orthography. They felt like it maybe was a hindrance to them in some way, but I found that this was a, actually a tremendous help. And I thought the book does, did a really good job of phasing out the altered orthography so that by the end of about lesson 76, the kids are reading with the typical orthography. Okay, so let's take a look inside. Before you get to the first lesson, there's a bunch of pre-matter that I highly recommend reading. And then we start with lesson one. Now I'm gonna show you two lessons. We won't go through the entire lesson, but I'll just show you the outline of the lessons. And I wanna really give you a sense of uh, the type of timing that the lessons take. Early lessons take about 15 minutes, but I found that later lessons take longer than that. Um, in fact, for one of my kids, it sometimes took up to an hour. And that was too much for us. So I'll share with you what I did at that point. We'll look at lesson one and lesson 78. Here's lesson one. Let's look at task one. In each task, there are directions to the parent 
in parentheses, and there's red text, and this is the text that you say. This is your script. So if I was sitting with my child right now, I would point to the M, and I would say, I'm going to touch under the sound and say the sound. Mm. Your turn to say the sound when I touch under it. Get ready. And that's when the child would say the sound. If your child uh, says something wrong uh, or is not responding, then it gives you sort of a, a way to correct the child. And then we get down here, I'm touching the first ball here. Again, get ready. And down here we're pointing to the S. So in this first uh, lesson, we're introducing M and S, or they don't call them by their names yet. So this is the M mm, and this is the S. They get into naming the, the sounds later on. So here we're pointing to the S. I'm gonna to touch under the sound and say the sound. S your turn to say the sound when I touch under it. Get ready. And then a correction, and then another opportunity for practice. Again, get ready. So in this way, the tasks are set up. So lesson one is composed of six tasks. We have three tasks on this page and three tasks on this page. The last task of every lesson is sounds writing. So the kids are getting a chance to learn how to write the new letters. I didn't do this with my kids because I had I was using a different curriculum uh, to teach my kids how to write their letters. Um, so we just omitted this last task in each of the of the lessons. But each of these tasks for the first, I want to say 50 to 70 uh, lessons, each task goes pretty quickly. But as you progress through the book, later lessons take much longer than 15 to 20 minutes. Here we're going to take a look at lesson 78 and you'll see that each task takes much longer than the early tasks. In fact, some of these later lessons took one of my kids up to sometimes an hour, sometimes even more than that to complete. What I did at that point was use our visual timer. At the beginning of the lesson, I would set the timer for 15 to 20 minutes and when the time was up, my kid got a choice whether he wanted to continue for another five minutes or pause for the day and pick up the next day. So sometimes these later lessons took us two, sometimes even three days to complete. So let's take a look at lesson 78 and you'll get a sense of why these later lessons take longer. So in task one, the kids are reading each of these words. In task two, they're saying each of the letter names of the word before they read the word. Here, they're reading each of these words in what they call the fast way. And then they're reading this story. And they have set up here that they're, the child is to read the story twice. The first, so the child reads the story the first time, and the second time through, there, you're going to pause at each of these letters to ask the questions that are outlined here. So after those two readings, there's a picture comprehension section, and you're going to ask the child a bunch of questions about the picture, which is related to the story. And then finally, the writing letters, which again, I skipped. One tip here that I have for you is before you start the lesson with your kid for the day, I would recommend putting a post-it note or some other way to cover the picture so that the kid doesn't see the picture before he or she gets a chance to read the story. So after the 100th lesson, there's a what now section that outlines what to do next. There's a, a list, an ordered list of books to continue the instruction with, along with four steps to scaffold the extended reading lessons. Now I was using this curriculum with three of my kids at the same time. So I created this tracker to help me keep track of where each kid was in the curriculum. At first, this was just an empty template with the lesson number on the left-hand side and blanks uh, in the subsequent rows. And then I would use our date stamp to go ahead and date stamp each cell when each of the kids completed the lesson. Now you certainly don't need to do this, but if you're teaching more than one child, or if you need documentation for homeschooling or legal purposes, this is an easy way to keep track of that. Here's another pro tip. Whether you're using this curriculum or a different curriculum to teach your child to read, it's important that your child hold the sounds when he's reading a word. Here's what that looks like with the word M-O-M. -M. Mom. This is called connected phonation. And this is in contrast to segmenting phonation, where M-O-M -M would be read as m a m. Research has shown that holding the sounds or connected phonation is more effective than segmenting phonation. And this particular reading curriculum, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons, leverages this approach. So the promise of the Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons curriculum is that 
by the completion of this book, your child would be reading at a solid second grade level. When we finished the curriculum and started the ordered list of next books, I wanted some data to help me understand what my kids' reading levels were. But outside of a standardized assessment, there isn't a psychometrically valid or reliable way to get that information. So I ended up turning to the Lexile Framework for Reading to help guide me. The Lexile Framework for Reading is a scientific approach that places both the reader and the text on the same developmental scale. So what I did was I looked up the Lexile level of the books my kids could read independently with success. And I'm sorry I don't have it to show, but what I did with that information was I created a spreadsheet tab for each kid and I listed all of the books that they were reading successfully along with the book's Lexile level. I also created a spreadsheet tab where I listed all the book titles from the curriculum's next books to read along with their Lexile levels. And as my kids progressed through this next books list, I added those along with the Lexile levels to, their to my kids' specific tab. So that for each kid, I had a running list of the books they could read successfully independently along with the Lexile levels of those books. I was then able to sort by Lexile level so that I could see the lowest levels my kids were reading successfully at and also the highest levels, as well as the frequency of the levels within that range. Then I looked at the Lexile norms by grade level. These data show you end of year student measures at the 50th and the 90th percentiles. Now the norms are available from grade K through 12th. I've just truncated this list to grade four for the purposes of this video. So then I took the information that I gathered for each of my kids in terms of the Lexile range that they were reading successfully within, and I compared them to these norms. So for my purposes, I focused on the Lexile levels in the 90th percentile for each grade level. Now I did that because the typical or midpoint of student norms is not the same as achieving the grade level performance standards. Often, only the top third of students meet grade level performance standards. So a student at the 50th percentile could be both typical, but also not meeting grade level performance standards. So I fo that's why I focused on the 90th percentile norms. So you can see why this is definitely not a precise approach. And I know that I don't have an empirical Lexile score for my kids, but I do know the Lexile level of books that they can read successfully, and that gives me some sense of what their reading levels might be. And that's important because it helps me to match them with books in their independent reading sweet spot or their zone of proximal development. So now I can go to Lexile's find a book search tool, type in what I think their Lexile range is, identify their areas of interest, and get a list of books that would generally be appropriate for their reading level. My kids and I have such fond memories of this curriculum. I would snuggle up on the couch with each kid one-on-one -on -one, and we'd do the lessons together. It took us about a year and a half to complete this curriculum and we didn't do it daily. We probably got to it four, sometimes five days per week. My twins were five years old when we completed this curriculum and they were reading on a solid second grade level. I didn't use any other reading program with them after this, but they have both been reading independently since we completed the program. They really love to read, and at this point, they just turned six, they are fluent readers. They've transitioned from learning to read to reading to learn. My son was between six and a half and seven when we finished, and although he was reading at probably an early first grade level, he was still struggling. This curriculum definitely was not enough for him, and he needed more structured phonics instruction after this program. I think this has more to do with his possible neurodiversity than the efficacy of the curriculum that we used. So after doing a little bit more research, I found and started using the Explode the Code curriculum workbooks with him. Explode the Code is a research-based, multi-sensory program geared to improving literacy with direct, systematic phonics instruction. It's an Orton-Gillingham-based program and is offered as either a series of printed workbooks or online. Explode the Code came highly recommended, and one of the reasons I chose this program is because it's used as an RTI reading intervention. RTI stands for Response to Intervention, and it's an instructional approach that provides early intervention services to struggling students to improve their skills. I'll just take a moment and show you inside. This is the first book. There are several books in this series. You can see there are eight, and then between each book, there's like a half step book. So there's also a one and a half, a two and a half, a three and a half, etc. And then beyond this, there's something called beyond the code. 
So there's a lot offered in this program. So I'll just show you inside this first book so you can get a sense of the approach that they take. Here's the table of contents for this first one. And here is the first lesson. Here they're having to find the picture that begins with the sound of the letter. So addition, astronaut, apple. Here they're finding the same word and circling it. Here they're writing, getting some practice writing the letters. Here they're reading hat and they're copying the letters and then they're circling the appropriate icon. Here they're starting to spell. So this is a rat, so they're looking for the er, er sound. Er, at. They're looking for the T sound there and then they're, they're writing out the letter or they're writing out the word. Here they are matching the, um, where's the rat? Down here. Here they're matching the words to the icon and they are, they're writing, they're writing that word. Here they're having to read out rat. Oh, that's that one. They'd circle that one. K and not that. K at. There's the one. Here they're reading two sentences. They're figuring out which sentence represents the drawing here and they're putting a check in that box. These are all pretty cute usually. Here they're writing the word hat. So they'd have to, you know, figure out how to spell it. They can always look back to um, and this begins lesson two. So that's kind of what this looks like. So my son has completed the first work workbook in this series, but the more I get to know how he learns, the more I think that the online version would be a better fit for him. So I recently purchased a one-year license for Explode the Code Online. And I'm really excited about that because the online version is appropriate for tiers one, two, and three intervention under RTI, and the workbooks are only appropriate for tiers one and two. Here's another pro tip for you. Once you know what curriculum you want for almost any subject, always look at the Homeschool Buyers Co-op first. It's free to join and they offer deep discounts on what they have. For example, when I was looking to buy the one-year license for Explode the Code Online, on the Explode the Codes website, it would have been $65, but on Homeschool Buyers Co-op, it was only 35, plus a $5 uh, processing fee. So it was $40 in total. And finally, while we were using the Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons curriculum, I also supplemented with these early readers. We started with the Bob's books and then progressed to Miss Rhonda's readers and then to my first I Can Read books and then to some of the Dr. Seuss board books and then to Elephant and Piggy books and beyond. I'll go ahead and put links to these in the show notes, but you can probably find these all in your local library. So that's the approach I took to teach my kids how to read. It worked very well for my twins, and they're now fluent readers. They're reading to learn. And while my son may not yet be reading on a second grade level, he will get there, and the Teach Your Child to Learn in 100 Easy Lessons gave him a great start. Given how well this worked, this is the approach I plan to take with my now two-year-old when she's ready for structured reading lesson. Well, thank you so much for watching. If there's a curriculum that worked well for your kids, especially for diverse learners, please share in the comments section below. And if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, hitting the thumbs up button, and the notification bell so you're sure to catch my future videos.